Hello, I'm Donna Bauer, the original note buyer, and today I'd like to talk to you about Dodd-Frank as it pertains to seller financing. Before we get started, if you haven't already, please join my mailing list at thenotebuyer.com, that's T-H-E, notebuyer.com, so that you can receive my note buyer updates. Let's start by asking what is Dodd-Frank? The Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act is a federal law that places significant regulations on financial institutions to prevent unnecessary risk-taking and abusive lending practices. One of its main goals is to protect homeowners from predatory lenders. Although Dodd-Frank includes a vast array of banking and lending regulations, the purpose of this presentation is to help homeowners and real estate investors understand what they must do to comply with Dodd-Frank as it pertains to seller financing. The primary focus will be on two exceptions that cover most individuals and most part-time real estate investors. Frequently asked questions will be answered at the end. I do need to give this legal disclaimer. This information is provided for general educational purposes only and is not to be construed as legal advice. Every transaction has its own nuances that must be taken into account. Therefore, do not rely on this information without first consulting an attorney concerning both federal and state laws which may affect your specific transaction. So the question is, does Dodd-Frank affect seller financing? Effective January 10th, 2014, all seller finance notes involving a consumer as a borrower must be Dodd-Frank compliant. Who is a consumer? A consumer is a natural person who intends to live in the house. So you don't have to worry about rental properties. Commercial loans are not governed by Dodd-Frank. They're completely outside of the law. It's not that they're an exception. They simply are not governed by the Dodd-Frank Act. So what determines whether a loan is a residential or consumer loan versus a commercial loan? It's very simple. If the borrower is going to live in the house, it's a residential or consumer loan. If the borrower is going to rent the property out or use it as a business, then it's a commercial loan. Now you might be thinking, hey, if I don't sell to tenant buyers, I don't have to worry about Dodd-Frank. That's right, you got it. To completely avoid Dodd-Frank, make loans to landlords and businesses, not to homeowners. Make your loans to entities, not individuals. And I like to add a borrower's acknowledgement to my commercial promissory note saying that the proceeds will not be used for consumer purposes. If you do these three things, it will be very clear that your loan is a commercial loan and it will not be governed by Dodd-Frank. In summary, a loan must be Dodd-Frank compliant if 1. It's created after January 10th, 2014 and 2. The borrower is going to live in the property. So if you are buying a note that was created before January 10th, 2014, you don't have to worry about whether or not it is Dodd-Frank compliant. Well, all I've got to say about that is, thank goodness for exceptions. There are two popular exceptions to make it easier for 
the individual who is a one-time seller. For instance, maybe you have a couple that have lived in their house for 40 years and they go to sell it and they just want to sell their house and they want to offer seller financing so they can sell it quickly. Or for the part-time real estate investors who are doing less than three deals in a 12-month period. Everyone else must comply with the more stringent regulations of Dodd-Frank, including the need to use a licensed mortgage loan originator. The first exception is the one property exception. It's for any natural person, estate, or trust who provides seller financing to an owner-occupant only one time in any 12-month period. Please note that the seller cannot be an LLC, a corporation, or a partnership. This is designed to help the older couple, like I said, that have lived in the house for 40 years. So it's designed for a natural person, or if that person has passed away for their estate, or a lot of people hold their properties in living trusts. So in this way, it's designed to help that person who is going to sell a property only one time in any 12-month period. This is the only time that balloons are allowed with seller-financed residential loans. There is no need to prove the borrower's ability to repay, which is ATR. And Best of all, there's no need to use a licensed mortgage loan originator, commonly called an MLO. So truly, this is the most lenient scenario, and in fact, this is our target market. If you are buying and selling existing privately held mortgages, you are generally looking for that individual who lived in the property for a period of time and they sold it and took back a note. So whether you are flipping or holding seller finance notes, your target market typically is individuals who lived in the home. In most cases, they fall under the one property exception, which is the most lenient when it comes to Dodd-Frank. You might be thinking, if I use a different trust for each property, then I will always fall under the one property exception. Well, I highly recommend that you check with your attorney on this, especially regarding state laws. Many of the states have enacted much stricter laws than the federal law. Some of them have realized that this is often used as a loophole to get around the law. So in such case, sometimes in the state laws, there is specific language in the statutes that lumps together all properties that are controlled by one person, even if they are held in different entities. So this idea of using a different trust for each property is no longer a recommended solution, at least not without checking with your individual state laws. There are some restrictions to the one property exception. First of all, you cannot have negative amortization. Negative amortization is when the borrower is not paying at least the amount of the interest. So what happens is, instead of the loan being paid down each month, the loan actually increases each month. Negative amortization loans are not a good idea to begin with, so that really is no problem. With the one property exception, interest has to be fixed for at least five years. Adjustable rates are allowed with limits. It has to be fixed for five years. The rate cannot exceed a set index and it cannot increase more than 2% per year and 6% over the life of the loan. Now I will tell you that I hate buying a seller finance note with an adjustable rate. Rarely do I ever see them, but one time I did buy one 
and it just was not worth the hassle of making sure that you complied with all the notices and everything that was involved. So this restriction really does not affect me at all. Next, the seller cannot have constructed the residence during the normal course of business. What does that mean? If a builder builds a bunch of homes and he carries back a seller finance note, it is not going to fall under the one property exception, even if he only did one property in a 12-month period. On the other hand, if there is a builder who happened to build his own home, not in the ordinary course of his business, but he just happened to build a home for himself and he later sold that home, then it may fall under the one property exception. And lastly, this exception applies only to the property owner. What does that mean? That means that if you are a realtor or a consultant or some other third party, then you need to have a licensed MLO involved. This exception is for the actual homeowner. The second exception is the not more than three properties exception. And it is for any person or entity who provides seller financing to an owner occupant not more than three times in any 12 month period. So notice with the not more than three properties exception, the seller can be an individual, a trust, an LLC, a corporation, or a partnership. This is designed to help the part-time real estate investors. Now in this one, you cannot have any balloons. The only time that balloons are permissible in residential seller finance notes is under the one property exception. That's the only time. And there's a lot of misconception about this. I hear people talking about putting balloons on their notes and they're in the business. They're a part-time investor and they've bought a little pool of notes and they're They've taken back the property and resold them, and they're adding balloons to those seller carry back notes, and it's not going to fly. Under the not more than three properties exception, you do have to prove the borrower's ability to repay, and we will talk about that in a little bit. But the good thing is, you don't need to use a licensed mortgage loan originator. So when you look at that, it seems very reasonable. No balloons, you prove the borrower's ability to repay, and you don't need a licensed MLO. The not more than three properties exception has the same restrictions as with the one property exception. No negative amortization, the interest must be fixed for five years, adjustable rates are allowed with some limits, the seller cannot have constructed the residence during the normal course of business, and the exception applies only to the property owner. So now the big question becomes, what if you do more than three loans per year? Any person or entity who originates more than three seller-financed residential loans in any 12-month period must have a licensed mortgage loan originator oversee and sign off on the transaction. And the loan must comply with all regulations, including but not limited to Dodd-Frank, the SAFE Act, TILA, RESPA, Regulation Z, HOPA, and HUD. Now if you're thinking of kind of sliding under the wire, you might want to reconsider because the penalties for violating any of the federal requirements are very harsh. In addition to minimum penalties ranging from $4,000 to $1 million, yes I said $1 million per day, violators may also be subject to having to return all the interest that the borrower paid refunding the borrower's costs, having the contract rescinded, having to return the real property if the lender had acquired it through foreclosure, or making restitution, and a whole lot of other penalties. 
So you can see this is really very serious and not to be taken lightly. So let's address some very specific questions. Are balloons allowed or not? Hopefully you have this in your head already. Balloons are allowed only if you fall under the one property exception. And that is that you are a natural person, estate, or trust. You only provide seller financing one time in any 12-month period and you own the property that's being sold. Who has to use a licensed mortgage loan originator? That is anyone who does more than three residential loans in any 12-month period. And remember, it's only residential if the borrower is going to live in it. What is needed for an MLO license? Requirements vary from state to state and may include extensive continuing education, testing by the state, a criminal background check, a credit report, the posting of a bond, and a lot more. So it's not a real easy thing to do, but on the other hand, if you are in the business of creating loans on a regular basis, it is doable. And keep in mind, even if you don't want to go get the MLO license yourself, you can always hire a licensed MLO to oversee your deals. Do I have to prove the borrower's ability to repay? Yes, unless you fall under the one property exception. And again, that's a natural person, a state or trust, you're only doing one loan in any 12-month period and you own the property that's being sold. How do you determine the borrower's ability to repay? What you need to do is calculate the borrower's debt-to-income ratio. You're going to take into account all of their debts and all of their income. So you look at current or reasonably expected income or assets their current employment status, the monthly payment of the covered transaction, as well as the monthly payment of any simultaneous loans, and the monthly payment of mortgage-related expenses, and then you look at their current debt obligations, their alimony and child support and other debts, and you want to try to keep that debt-to-income ratio under 43 to 28, which is the suggested ratio. You also want to take a look at their credit history. Now keep in mind, if you fall under the one property exception, you don't have to do this. If you are doing more than one property per year, you need to learn how to calculate the debt to income ratio. Can my LLC fall under the one property exception? No, the one property exception is only for natural individuals, estates, or trusts. However, LLCs may fall under the not more than three properties exception. Can I have an adjustable interest rate? Adjustable interest rates are permitted under both exceptions with restrictions. They must be fixed for five years, they cannot exceed a set index, and they cannot increase more than 2% per year or 6% over the life of the loan. Will note buyers buy notes that are not Dodd-Frank compliant? Most institutional buyers will not buy a note unless it is Dodd-Frank compliant because of the potential liability. If you really want to buy the note, you may want to consider the possibility of going back and making it compliant after the fact. Do I have to be Dodd-Frank compliant if I am doing modifications on a pool of non-performing bank notes? This is a very vague area. It's often covered by state law. A deciding factor is whether you're making a simple modification or whether you're making so many modifications that you're really in essence writing a new note. 
I strongly suggest that you check with your attorney for your particular situation or just to be safe, use a licensed MLO or servicer. Can a rehabber avail himself of the no more than three properties exception? This is one that I have read a lot about, but I really haven't heard very many people talk about it. If you have rehabbed the house in the ordinary course of business, you might not qualify for the exception, especially if the rehab required building permits. This is similar to the contractor rule. So honestly, I recommend that you check with your attorney for your particular situation, or just to be safe, go ahead and use a licensed MLO or servicer. Where can I find a licensed mortgage loan originator? I will tell you that it's not easy to find MLOs for seller finance deals. The reason is because MLOs just don't want to take the risk to underwrite a deal for someone else. I would recommend that you ask your local mortgage broker or servicer. There is one company that uh, I have seen their packages and they are excellent. They are not in every state, but they are in a lot of states, and that is Texas pridelending.com texaspridelending.com the cost varies from six hundred to a thousand dollars some places even charge a percent of the loan so you need to shop around when you're looking for the licensed MLO one thing that people tend to forget about is the state laws don't forget that you must comply with state laws in addition to Dodd-Frank. As I mentioned before, many states have passed their own version of the SAFE Act, which is even more stringent than the final Dodd-Frank Act. That's why it's important that you seek your own legal counsel, and it's also important why you should be active in real estate investor groups in your own locality. It's really a good idea to network with other investors so you know the nuances that are specific to your particular state or county. You may be saying, how does Dodd-Frank affect me? If you are buying and selling true seller carryback mortgages, Dodd-Frank has little effect because your target market falls under the one property exception. If you are buying reperformers that have been modified, I recommend that you check with your attorney because this is a gray area. If you are a part-time real estate investor doing not more than three properties in a 12-month period, don't use balloons. Make sure to check the borrower's ability to repay. And remember, you do not need to use a licensed mortgage loan originator. If you are a full-time real estate investor doing more than three deals in a 12-month period, do not use balloons. Be sure to check the borrower's ability to repay and make sure that you definitely use a licensed mortgage loan originator. If you are doing loan modifications on non-performing bank loans, check with your attorney. Or to be safe, use a licensed mortgage loan originator or servicer. If you are a major rehabber, check with your attorney. Or to be safe, go ahead and use the licensed mortgage loan originator. If you are a building contractor, definitely use a licensed MLO. In summary, no one likes regulation. Most of all me, I believe we have become a regulation nation and I hate it. But on the positive side, Dodd-Frank has curtailed a lot of the predatory lending. 
and for most people the one property exception and the not more than three properties exception make compliance relatively easy. If you are doing more than three note originations in a 12 month period become a licensed mortgage loan originator or hire someone to oversee your deals. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and I hope that it has shed some light on the Dodd-Frank Act. Please feel free to share the link because knowledge is power. People get in trouble because of lack of knowledge. Once you know what the laws are, you can take steps to comply. I welcome your comments and questions. Please email me at Donna at the notebuyer.com and be sure to join my mailing list at the notebuyer.com so that you can keep up on future updates and upcoming events at the notebuyer. Until we meet again, happy note buying. This is Donna Bauer, the original notebuyer, signing off.